Good day. This is the Snell's Log Review. This is for if you miss class, there was a work at home day or anything to that effect. And it assumes that you've already gone and opened up the YouTube video as an introduction to Snell's Law. So assuming you've already watched that video, you notice that when water was added to a container, a coin seemed to mysteriously appear. And so as you can see here, when light leaves and heads up this way, if there was no water in it, it would continue to go straight. But because in this situation, we filled it with water, and water appears to be all the way to the top, then that light is going to bend away from the normal. And so if we're looking at light that would have struck somewhere along the edge, the normal would be something like this. Then the light is going to bend away from the normal, as opposed to being in the original angle, your angle of incidence coming from below. So it'll actually bend a little bit further. So your angle of refraction will be bigger. As a result, due to that, what your eye appears to see is this. We've talked in class about how light travels in straight lines. And that's what we've been trained to believe all of our life. And so we kind of get tricked into thinking that this light came from here. And if the light appears to come from here, we imagine that we have seen a coin higher up. This is responsible for optical illusions. That can be responsible for fun things like, hey, I think I can touch here if you're in a canoe. But just remember that the bottom is deeper than it appears. Okay, so if we're going to be looking at the math of Snell's Law, what we're going to be doing is working with indices, that's the plural of index, of refraction. And so, just like the video talked about, uh, an index of refraction is a constant for different substances. And so air or a vacuum, your index of refraction is simply one. Whereas with water or glass or diamond, uh, they have different optical densities. And those different optical densities can help us to determine what they are. So uh, if you're looking at a review of terms that we've looked at from our qualitative studies, that means studies without numbers, then if light is coming from air, you would call that the incident ray. And if we are looking at where the light bent into, that is your refracted ray. And the angles that they make are always measured relative to the normal. So this is your angle of incidence, whereas down below is your angle of refraction. And I can't emphasize this point enough. That incidence doesn't mean air, it doesn't mean water. It's going to depend on your situation. So in this case, it's starting in the air, and therefore it's going to be an incident angle and ray in the air. If we reverse the path, then your angle of incidence and your incident ray would be that of water. Okay. So before we move into the math of Snell's Law, you need to get your calculator. And there's a couple things you need to practice. So your calculator needs to be in degree mode. If it is not, this will not work. And you may have to look up online, how do I change your particular brand of calculator into degree mode. Uh, often there's a button that will look like this, or sometimes it will look like this. It's kind of an old school calculator. And hit that a couple of times, you might get into degree mode. Otherwise, this is a job for you to learn your calculator. Okay, to make sure it's in the right mode, I need you to type in sine of 30 degrees. There's no need to put in a degree symbol, it's assumed. And if you hit the equal sign, it should come out as 0 0.5. If it didn't, you are not in degree mode. Go figure out how to get it into degree mode. Now, just like operations in mathematics, like addition has an opposite of subtraction, and multiplication has an opposite of division, sine has an opposite function. And it looks like this, sine to the negative 1. And how you get that? 
is usually a shift sign or a second function sign. And so to reverse what we just did, you need to be able to put in inverse sign of 0 0.5, and you need to have that come out to 30 degrees. So if you've done these things in your calculator and you can do those two steps, you're ready to move on. If you haven't, you'll need to look up somewhere uh, owner's manual. We still have that, most likely a uh, quick search online. Figure out how to get your calculator into degree mode. Okay. So we're going to do, leave a couple of different parts blank in Snell's Law. So just like the video reminded you, the Snell's Law is this equation right here. And so if we're going to be going from water to, sorry, reverse that. If we're going to be coming from air to water, then uh, first of all, the light should bend towards the normal. So these are concepts that we've covered in qualitative labs so far. So this angle where we have light coming in from the air should become smaller while it's in the water. If the light is bending from air to water, here's where we're going to be substituting into our formula. So we've learned that the n value for air, and this is the only n value that you need to memorize, all other ones will be either given to you or you'll be given enough information to calculate it. Here is your index of refraction for air. This is the angle that is making in the air. And over on the other side, this is the refracted side where it bent. We're going into water and we're telling you that the index of refraction for water is 1.33. And the beauty of this equation is that it's going to tell you not just which way it bends, but exactly how much it will bend. So sine of 45, if you put that into your calculator, should be 0 0.707. And carry three digits, please, for your calculations until you're at the end. And your index is 1, and so 1 times anything is itself. And over on this side, 1.33 times sine theta r. If we want to get the 1.33 to come to the other side, then we need to divide both sides by 1.33. If we do that, then this is going to cancel out. And 0 0.707 divided by 1.33 is going to give us a decimal 0.531. And this is where you're going to be using your inverse sine function to reverse this to give you an angle. And what we find is that the angle is 32 degrees, and 32 is less than 45, so that we get a result as expected. And we can predict that every single time. And so if we take our laser into uh, the lab, shine it in at 45 degrees, we'll find that the light bent up to exactly 32 degrees when it came out. So if we continue these, I'll go through these relatively quickly. Uh, you can slow it down in the video if you need to take more time to process it. So we're reversing the path this time. And so we're gonna be coming from the water and we're going into air. And so this is the from side or incident, and this is the going into side, and so that is gonna be our refracted part of our equation. So if this is 30 degrees, then we should project that this will be greater than 30 degrees. So we're coming from water, and so this, the index of refraction for where we're coming from is 1.33 because we're coming from the water this time. And we know that the light is coming at 30 degrees. So this is something that I get to do when I go night diving for scuba. If I shine the light at the surface, 
it does not come straight out. It actually bends down towards the shoreline. And on the other side, if I want to figure out how much it's going to bend, well, it depends what we're going into. But for grade 10 optics, we're going to use air consistently as one of our two substances. So we're going into air, so it's 1.00 times sine of our angle. So we do our math, 1.33 times 0.5 gives you 0.665 is equal to 1. Took the extra zeros off just for simplicity. Times sine theta r. So the 1 times anything, that can just go away. What we're left with is, well, we got to get the sine to go away. To do that, it comes to the other side. And when it does so, it becomes inverse sine. So sine to the negative 1, or inverse sine of 0.665 gives us 42 degrees, which is bigger than 30. It matches our expectations. So another situation, uh, one of the ways that we find the angle to the fractions is if we look for a ratio of the angles, sine of the angles, for our situation. So if we come from air at 30 degrees, and it comes in at 10 degrees into the plastic, this is a tremendous bending of light. Uh, so this would actually be more impressive than even what diamond can do. So for this, the mathematics would be slightly different simply because we have our two angles. And in this case, we have to look for our index. So this is what we're trying to solve for. So we're coming from air and we're going into the plastic. So in this case, 1 times sine of 30, that's our angle that the light came in at, is going to be equal to 0.5. And sine of 10 degrees is 0.174. Mathematically, this is a bit more what you're used to. We're trying to solve for our index of refraction for our plastic. And to do that, we're going to have to divide both sides by 1, sorry, 0.174. And that's going to result in an index of 2.87. Okay, so an index above 2 is a very, very good bender of light. It slows it down a lot. And finally, we'll do one last one. So if we're underwater and we're looking at light coming in, and so the diver sees light at 40 degrees, this is 40 degrees here. What would the angle of incidence have to be in order for that to happen? And we should expect that that is going to be greater 40 degrees because when light comes in, it bends towards normal. That was its original path. It's going to bend towards the normal. And for this situation, we're going from air and we're going into water. It's coming from air, so your index is 1. It's going into water, so the index of refraction for water is 1.33. Sine of 40 degrees, so we figured out that it's bending into the water at 40 degrees. And so an angle that would allow that to happen, we just have to solve mathematically. So sine of 40 is 0 0.643. 1.33 is your index of refraction for water. So if we multiply these together, we get 0 0.855. If you want to get this to come to the other side, that's where the sine to the negative 1 comes from. Inverse sine of 0.855 gives you 59 degrees. And so that is the very quick tour of Snell's Law. Feel free to send me messages if you are struggling. Thank you for your work on reviewing a day that you missed at school or a work-at-home day.